It is now time for Are You Zomb Safe? This is where Craig and Jay assess your home and city to determine just how safe you will be in a zombie apocalypse. Today, they look at the mysterious Isle of Lewis. I knew a guy named Lewis once. I didn't care for him. Okay, welcome to the first in what we hope is a long series of ZomSafe assessments. In these assessments, we look at the area where you live and determine whether or not it is safe in terms of a zombie apocalypse. With me, as always, is the Master of Disaster, Jason Hall. Thank you, Freebeard. Good to be here. And we would like to thank Gary for sending us photos of the area around where he lives so that we could determine just how ZomSafe it is. So to begin with, Gary is located on the Isle of Lewis. This is a small island off the coast of Scotland. It has a population of about 20,000 people spread over a vast area, and near Gary is a small town of roughly 50 people. That red area kind of looks like the head of a dog. Why not call it the Isle of Dogs? Because then when people get there and don't see very many dogs, they can be pretty pissed about being misled. Who goes on a vacation hoping to see dogs? Is that their entire vacation? If they want to see a bunch of dogs, they could just go to my Uncle Carlos's house. He has a ton of dogs there. Jay, it's not really relevant here, okay? So, this is the Isle of Lewis. It's a small island, sparsely populated, and it's isolated. And those are all big points for surviving here during a zombie apocalypse. Indeed. Less population means less zombies. While being isolated means less people are going to be coming to the island if there is a zombie apocalypse. I gotta disagree with you there, Jay. I think in a zombie apocalypse, a lot of people are going to start making their way to islands because they want to get away from the zombies. So Gary, you're going to get an influx of people arriving on your island, and that is going to make for a very serious situation. The population of the island may double or triple, and that puts strain on resources. Our first photo from Gary seems to show a lot of clouds, some bushes, and, well, really nothing around. Well, this may not seem like much to the untrained eye, the eye of a zombie killer, such as myself, sees many things. First, it is very flat, and that is good. That means you'll be able to see the zombies coming from a distance. There seems to be some bushes there as well. That does worry me, as zombies could hide behind those bushes and wait for you to walk by. I really don't think that's going to happen. Remember when those fourth graders hid behind a bush and then jumped out and scared you when you ran down the street crying? Yes, well, that was a long time ago. It was two months ago. Okay, well, moving on, there seems to be a lot of clouds in this photo, and through our research, we found that the climate of the Isle of Lewis is very wet and cloudy. This is good and bad. First, lots of rainfall, you get a constant supply of fresh water, which is important if you're in a survival situation. Gary did mention that he would put up a palisade wall 8 feet high around his property, with a ditch 12 feet deep that zombies would fall into. However, in a siege situation, you need fresh water, and the rainfall will provide that for you. You also need power, though, and it's cloudy, so solar power is probably going to be useless. It is windy, though, so there will be plenty of wind power for you to harvest. Ah, true! So build a wind turbine, and you'll have plenty of power for your home in a zombie apocalypse. Of course, if you have a 100-foot wind turbine on your property, that is going to really make you stand out on this flat ground. It may get some undesirables coming your way, and I'm not talking about zombies or carnies. No, if Romero has taught us anything, it's that the real danger in a zombie apocalypse is other humans. Also, clowns with chainsaws, very dangerous. Oh, good lord, how could I forget? Gary, stay away from clowns with chainsaws in a zombie apocalypse. I cannot stress this enough. Okay, our next photo shows some land, and yeah, you know what, this place is pretty flat. Yeah, it looks like there's a hill off in the distance. That could be a spot where zombies scout for people to eat. Zombies don't scout. What do you think that hill's called? Maybe it's Dog Hill. Why are you still on this dog kick? I've been watching a lot of Dog Whisperer lately. Seriously, man. We're trying to be professional here. You know, it's hard to take you seriously when you're wearing a glitter shirt. I like it. Lay off. Okay, so the next photo here has something very important in it. A hill. That and deer. Deer have meat on them that you can eat. Way to interrupt me, Jay. You were taking too long. Okay, so, there are deer there, and judging by how they are not scurrying away from the camera like Craig around fourth graders, I would say that the deer are used to humans. That makes it easier for you to sneak up on them and kill them. Then, you have some good meat to eat. If you have these deer within your walled area, Gary, you'll be able to harvest them slowly over time. You know, without completely depleting the food supply. You don't want to go crazy with eating meat, 
Otherwise, you could end up starving. Starving would be bad. Great contribution there, Jay. Just doing my part. Starving is not all fun and games. Right. Our next photo is of apparently the only road past Gary's place. The Isle of Lewis is known for being boggy, and that is very good news for you, Gary. Zombies have trouble walking on anything that is not a hard surface like concrete or grass. With bogs, the zombies are going to be stumbling around trying to get to you, and you can just sit back and watch the hilarity. Of course, the only problem is that peat bogs tend to encase things for centuries. Plenty of corpses have been pulled out of peat bogs dating back thousands of years, so that poses a problem for people of the future. Where are you going with this? Think about it, man. A zombie falls into the peat bog, it sinks, and slowly becomes encased. Then, 500 years from now, some archaeologist is rooting around in the peat bog and BAM! comes across a zombie. The zombie bites him and this whole zombie apocalypse starts over again. This is a potential problem, so, I don't know, Gary, put up a sign or something that says, Bog is a bit bitey. That should get the point across. Your thought process fascinates me, man. Okay, so it looks like you have barbed wire fence as well. That should keep zombies out until you build your palisade wall. That won't keep out zombies. Why do you keep contradicting me in everything I say? Say something right and I won't contradict it with the facts. Well, clearly the barbed wire fence is going to keep the zombies out if it keeps fire mantles in. It will keep a few zombies out, yes, but eventually they'll just push against it enough that it'll just fall over and there you go, zombie city. Okay, well, our last photo is of what I'm guessing is Gary's house. It looks rather isolated, and as we all know, isolated homes in a zombie apocalypse are safe. <laughs> Tell that to Barbara. All she did in that movie was run around screaming. I would have tossed her ass out. Good to know that the concept of saving women and children is foreign to you. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm not going to deal with some shrieking moron while zombies are attacking the house. For anyone who has not heard Craig scream, it is very high-pitched. Dude, seriously. Going back to the photo, it does look pretty secure and well away from the road. However... You need to make sure that until your palisade wall is up, Gary, you keep the lights off in the home at night. If people see lights on, they're going to come by and see what you have. You do not want that. Of course, you will already have a 100-foot tall wind turbine advertising your presence, so maybe the lights are not a great idea. Good point. Okay, to recap. Number one, you do not have much sun, so solar energy is out, but you have lots of wind, and that means wind turbines will provide you with power. Two, you get a lot of rain, so you don't have to worry about rainwater. Three, deer and sheep seem to populate the area around you, which means plenty of food. Four, you're in a sparsely populated area, which means less zombies to deal with initially, but you must make plans to deal with others coming to the island to get away from the zombies in Ireland and Scotland. Five, you only have one road, which makes it very easy to secure and you are surrounded by peat bogs, and that ensures the zombies will not be able to catch up to you easily without falling down. Six, it's very flat, so you'll see the zombies coming from miles away. In addition, the peat bogs will make it easy to build your wall and dig your trench. Anything to add, Jay? We never covered the fact that you can use the deer to ride away from danger. I don't think the deer will let you ride them. Santa rides deer. No, Santa has a bunch of flying reindeer who pull a sled. He doesn't ride them. Huh. So these deer probably can't fly. I'm guessing no, they cannot. Huh. All right then. Gary, do not attempt to ride the reindeer or throw them off a cliff. They cannot fly. They're not reindeer. They're deer. But good advice. We're going to give Gary four stars out of five. You lose a star because you don't have much solar energy. And you also lose a star because you're close to Ireland and the United Kingdom. And that means an influx of people trying to get away from the zombie apocalypse. Good luck, Gary. We'd like to thank Gary for sending us photos and information about where he lives. If you'd like us to do a ZOMSAFE assessment of where you live, just send us pictures and a brief profile of your area to cjzomcast at gmail.com.